I give my Instagram at the end? Yeah, I'll have people if they want to reach out to you, feel free to do it. So, okay. um, but sweet. So we're, we're going to jump to it, Brian. You know, thanks for joining us here. Uh, as you can see, you sold 15 policies in your first 14 days. Uh, breaking it down, you are a brand new life insurance agent, never sold life insurance before. I want this to be the video that helps a lot of new agents. So I want to first share with you, um, number one, why did you get started in the life insurance business? Why did you want to pursue this? And where were you before this? You were never even involved in life insurance. Um, what does that look like for you before you got started? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, first and foremost, you know, Peter, thank you for having me on. Really glad to be part of, of this journey and legacy family life and just be part of the channel here. Yeah, so a little bit about myself. Um, I was, I've worked for the city of, I live in Texas, so local city here where I live at. I worked for the city when I was 18. So I worked when I was 13 in landscape, 18, got the opportunity to work for the city, made a career out of it. Uh, things were absolutely great. And I worked there up till 2023, mm -hmm. pretty much, and kind of pivoted from there. Just life happened and whatnot. Kind of had an identity crisis in 2023, just trying to figure out who I was and what I wanted to, to kind of do long term. So I kind of went back to the roots and landscaping with my stepdad and just kind of helping him out here and there. A few odd jobs, nothing crazy. And along that process of 2023 is when I discovered the life insurance industry, right? I didn't really realize, I didn't know anything, anything of anything. Uh, I almost got recruited to be part of a couple of different three-letter IMOs. I'm not going to mention their names here, but um, just basically the big ones if you, if you know anything about the industry here. Um, but I was, I've always been the type of person to be very just kind of do my research before I make a decision. So I really took my time this past year. During that process is when I came across your channel here, right? And I started looking at your content, just kind of seeing how, you know, you operated and, and really just seeing the kind of value that you provided to somebody like myself, a new agent, new person into the industry, and really just started to consume that, right? And then it wasn't until finally this, this uh, where do, today's the 27th, it wasn't until I'd say a month and some change ago, I finally got my license. And I got my license and I hit you up. Uh, you interviewed me, did a couple of different interviews and, and really... Now the rest is history. I've been here for, I think almost on my third week and uh, this is where I'm at currently. Yeah. Yeah. So you started off this like not selling, you were doing some transfers and you just started selling. So uh, after jumping in, what is, um, what do you think is the number one piece of advice that you could give to yourself or someone who is literally brand new, fresh and green? Like what have you learned in this sh short period of time that, that you would give an advice to a new agent who's just jumping in? Anything that comes to mind? Yeah, I mean, there's a bunch of things that I've learned so much so far, man. Right. Uh, but if, if I could go back, you know, three weeks ago when I actually started dialing and just kind of learning this this system here, I would say consistency, um, which is what I've been doing and have that grit knowing that for somebody like myself who's completely new to sales, I just want to throw that out there. I have no experience selling anything um when it comes to products, or anything like that. So just understanding that if you're new to sales on top of the industry here, you're going to go through a curve of, you know, having that mental toughness and knowing that as long as you put the dials in your favor, it will work out. Um, and that's the biggest piece of advice that I could give to anybody who's just starting off, right? If, And what I mean by that is you need to double your productivity. The expectations here is, you know, we, they want us, we want us, you know, you expect us to hit 250 to 300 dials a day mm -hmm. for a senior agent here. As a new agent, I'm still, this is my last week here. I got promoted this week to be a senior agent, so I'll be on that side of town. But, you know, what I've been doing here is I've been doubling that. I've been averaging about 500 dials a day. Um, and I know that may seem like a lot, but in reality, I needed that because I didn't have the experience. I needed to get the reps in. Any opportunity that somebody would answer take advantage of that. Even if you feel like it's not going to go anywhere, get the reps in and have the repetition. Don't be afraid to hit that dial button. Love that. Yeah. I mean, I think your behavior of the, even just your first day, I knew that you're going to be really, really successful just from seeing how hard you worked and how like consistent you sat down, you know, you made the dials every single day. You didn't complain. And I think that that's why I knew from the beginning you, you would do so well in regards to struggling points. I mean, there were some probably some, some times where you didn't know what was like one of the weirdest challenges that you faced at first that you never thought would be a challenge now, like when you're watching the videos and you're consuming all the content, what was, what had, what was surprisingly like one of the biggest challenges you faced as a new agent? Um, I, the first two that I just thought of while you asked me that question was number one, 
learning how to <laughs> learning how to triple task. I wouldn't even say multitask, right? Because here's the thing, at least here, I can't speak for anything else, but when you're on, you're on. In other words, when you're dialing, you're also getting coached, you know, and you're also having to to do the call and go through the script. So learning how to hone in on that and overcome that that and develop that skill set, right, is definitely something that was a huge challenge. And also really learning how to connect with with the clients that we serve, right? Which is an older right group of people here. We have to be patient. Um, mm -hmm. Being being patient, it's not it's it's not one of my strong suits, and but it's also one of my strengths as far as who I am. I'm very very um, ambitious, but I also tend to like things and see results right then and there. So learning how to be patient, and that's something that I'm still cult cultivating to this day, and really taking the time to not just go through the script, not just go through the motions, but understand their needs, right? Because you're asking the questions that you need to ask for a reason. And that way you can actually establish a genuine connection and they'll be, they will actually want to open up to you to be able to actually, you know, put them in that best position possible as far as what they're looking for. So I would say those two things have been a challenge for me coming off the start. Mm -hmm. Love that. What's, um, what does your day look like that has allowed you to sell, you know, 15 policies in 14 days? Some days you sold two policies, some days when you're calling older leads. Um, but how have you managed your day to, you got promoted, but like how did you, you know, structure your day from the beginning to the end of allowing you to close these many deals so fast? Yeah. So, you know, typically we have the morning huddle. I'm, I'm located here in Texas, so it's eight o'clock my time mm -hmm. when the day starts. Um, I'm usually up before I try to get a couple dials in just to kind of get the, the ball rolling here mentally. And uh, after we get the evening huddle done, do our little trainings here and there, I start, I hit it. I hit it. It's at first, I will tell you this as a new agent coming into this industry, it is a grind. And it's not, it's not just the dials that I'm talking about. You have to sacrifice for a short, for a short amount of time. I'm still in that stage here with y'all guys here, but you do have to make this the center of, of what you're doing at least for the first month, first few months here. And that's exactly what I've been doing, right? I'll come in from eight my time, stop dialing like around seven, sometimes eight, and uh, study afterwards. What could I have done better? Study my script, uh, study the videos that you provide for us, right? Understanding the carriers so that the next day, you know, if I come across the same challenge, I can remember, okay, oh snap, last night, oh yeah, I remember Peter said this, or okay, there was this video on how to do this for the carry, okay, cool. So. That's the, that's where you're gonna be at. It's a grind. It's a sacrifice. You know, I'm a dancer. Shout out to DCD. It's a dance school <laughs> that I'm part of. Um, I've had to sacrifice. I've had to put that on pause, right? Mm -hmm. Because of being successful here and what I want to achieve long term. So definitely, if you have that mindset and you're willing to sacrifice that, and you have a good support system, mm -hmm. I will say that having a good support system here and outside of of work, um, you're definitely going to have a higher chance of of having success, like I have had so far. Mm -hmm. Love that. In regards to, I feel like maybe as you watched a lot of videos on YouTube, everyone said everyone basically plays out as anyone can be successful selling life insurance telltales. Knowing what you know now, do you think that's true? That literally anybody, I don't care where they're at, you think that's true? And if if so, what skills are required to be successful at selling life insurance? What what does someone need to have? Yeah, great question, Peter. So I would say yes and no. Okay. Um, I think I think the first thing that came to my mind here is you need to have care. You need <laughs> to you need to care. Because if you're going to go about it in the sense of I'm just going to try to sell the whole world and not give a crap about what you're doing and putting people in the best position, you're not going to succeed, right? That's first of all. Second of all, the qualities and character traits that I think someone should have, you need to have that grit, right? A lot, a lot, a lot of the things that I've learned in dance, not just learning how to dance, but who I've become in the last year and a half since I've started my journey, I've applied here. The mindset, the grit, not giving up showing up every single day, whether you had a great day or you had a bad day, learning to be balanced. One of the few, one of the pieces of advice that I think you gave me here was well, when I first started off and I made my first sale was like, hey man, it's great, celebrate it, but don't get too high off your supply because you're going to have bad days. And I've been learning to implement that now too. So learning to be balanced here and really just being consistent and trusting in this case, you know, whatever company you guys are going to end up working for, whatever IMO you guys are going to be part of, trusting their process if you do trust their process and seeing the fruits of your labor eventually come to, to, to light. Because at this point in time as a new agent, you're planting the seeds here and you need to be here to plant the seeds. So, yeah. Yeah, I love that. In regards to like 
what's one thing that you wish you knew before you got started as a life insurance agent? Like, I feel like there's so much information, so much to digest. There might be many different people that are painting different pictures, pictures about the industry. What, are, what is one thing that you wish you knew about selling life insurance at first that you wish you knew getting before you got started? Uh, I would say, I mean, I looked at a bunch of videos and, you know, whether it wasn't just your channel, but mainly your channel. But yeah, it's kind of like you said, from an outside perspective, you know, you kind of get sold the whole hurrah for the most part. You're going to make a ton of money. You're going to make a few phone calls, you know, and that's it. I wish, you know, and this is something that I've learned with time, obviously putting myself in the situation. I guess I wish I would have known a little more knowledge of is just understanding what it means to, to really be involved and care for the people that you're you're serving, right? And that's really something that you can't really, somebody can teach you. You just have to kind of put yourself in there and understanding that when, when I first interviewed with you, you told me, hey man, you know, you're gonna be working 50 plus 60 hours a week within your first few months, especially here. And although I knew that, doing it is a whole nother thing here, right? So I guess just understanding what you're getting yourself into and knowing that, and I don't mean this in a bad way, I'm not trying to discourage you guys here, whoever's watching this. What I mean by that is if you put in the work and you stay consistent, you will succeed. And if you believe in yourself, that's the biggest thing for this question that you just asked me, you need to have self-belief. Because if you don't believe in yourself, it's going to come across in your tonality. It's going to come gonna across the way you talk to people. It's going to come across in the way that you carry yourself as a person here. So really just having that conviction and knowing that, hey, man, I got into this for a reason. This is my core belief as to why I feel like I'm going to be successful. And always reminding yourself, I'm in this industry to help people. And I'm also in this industry because it's an opportunity for me and I'm going to change my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I think one thing that you said there is that self-belief. I think with self-belief comes the ability to prove to yourself first. And this is probably why the reason I brought you in is because you proved to yourself that you could be a great dancer in front of a lot of people. But what 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 about someone who is never been good at, you know, let's say sports or have never been great at sales, who's worked, you know, let's say like they've never been able to prove to themselves that they can do what it takes. I mean, do you think there's a level of dis discipline that's required or previous success that an agent must have before they get started as a life insurance agent? Um, I think I think there is. That kind of goes hand in hand with your character and who you are, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you have to have my background or competitive background in anything here, but what I am saying is, as a person, you know, you have to show up for yourself and. You can't teach me that, right? I can't teach you that. That's something that you just have to have as a person if you want to be successful. Because it's, it's trust me, guys, it's really, really easy to get discouraged. And I've had those days here since I've started. And that has nothing to do with the agency. That has nothing to do with Peter. That's just the mental grit that I need to develop and continue to develop. So I would say, yeah, you know, if, if you don't have that kind of background, that's that's okay. It's not the end of the world. You can develop that here. And like you said, just getting in the reps and building that confidence, because that's really what makes it's going to make you confident here, knowing that I've done it once, I've done it twice, I've done it three times. I know I can do it. So when those bad days comes, you're ready and you know that you have proven to yourself that you can do this. And I do believe in anyone who has that capability of self-belief has a really good chance of succeeding as long yeah. as they're in a place where they can be set up for success. Love that. Now, there's a lot of different models in the life insurance industry and you've probably got recruited by the people like you can go out there and build your own business or you can kind of go with what we're doing where we can kind of give you a turnkey system uh like like we'll we'll give you the script you have to you know we'll give you the leads everything how knowing what you know now like imagine if you were just had to go figure it all out and build a business how do you think it'd be a lot harder to have success in a, in a model like that where you have to go figure out your leads or figure out your chargebacks or figure out your you know client service like what type of what type of challenges do you think people would would face in a model like that especially Ooh. if you're brand new like just getting started yeah i mean the the challenges are 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 beyond me i'm still learning i mean i'm going to continue to learn but, but in that scenario that you're saying if somebody comes in trying to do everything all at once the chances of them being successful right off the bat in my personal opinion are, are slim to none and i'm going to tell you why because you're learning how to sell, first of all, if you have no sales experience. And even if you do have sales experience, you're learning how to sell to a specific type of clientele, right? That's one challenge of itself. Learning the carriers is a whole nother challenge of itself. Underwriting correctly is a whole nother challenge of itself. Being on time with your appointments is a challenge. Doing the calls, 
being consistent with the team, checking in on the team, them checking in on you. That's just the day-to-day -day thing. So I can't even imagine if you're trying to learn the other side of it, of chargebacks, you know, if you don't have a good script or if you're just trying to figure it out as you go. Now, I'm not discouraging anybody that has that mindset and wants to go down that path. More power to you. If you are more than capable of doing that and you have that self-belief, cool beans. But I'm speaking to everybody else that really is new to the industry here and really wants to have a high level of success, chances of succeeding. I would say that being in a position that I'm in, fortunately, to where, you know, you don't have to worry about any of that and having a great mentor, which is key, guys. You always want to have a good mentor. That's one thing that I learned in dance. If you have a great mentor, your learning curve is going to be reduced significantly. And that's really why, you know, I recommend, you know, finding somebody who will put you in that position to where you can succeed. And when I say succeed is, is, is selling, you know, correctly and being able to see results of selling and not recruiting. Love that. Brian, I think that's some great points about mentorship. And I think that's, you know, sports was the first thing that I connected with in sales is because I was very competitive. I think that's important and crucial for success. But when it comes to the actual sales process of how we sell and our script and how I train you to sell. What do you think about our sales process? Whether well, if it's the tonality, is it the what is have you learned most in your sales process that has helped you sell a lot? Like what is that one takeaway that yeah. really helped you become successful when it comes to just straight up selling? I would say that, you know, when it, when I'm when I got to a point where I wasn't so focused on the script here, I would say tonality, definitely the way you you break things down for us in regards to like, okay, in this part of the script, you want to sound curious or you want to sound empathetic. If somebody says, you know, they have a, a health condition when you're underwriting, you want to, you know, not just say it to say it. Cause that's actually one of the things that you coached me on. You're like, Hey dude, Brian, you know, I know you're saying this, but it's not coming across as you, as you being genuine. So really being genuine, right? If somebody really has COPD, for example, and be like, Oh man, how are you doing with that? You, you doing good. You know, those small little things, build the whole process when you're talking to somebody to ultimately close them at the end and understanding when and how to say things at what speed when to slow down all of those things encompass into into the one specific thing which is to to be able to help your client as bestly as you can and to earn their trust because remember guys at least what we're doing here it's telesales right you don't have the advantage of, of being face to face. So they're going based off what they're hearing and how you're saying it. So if you're coming across as nervous, they're going to get nervous. If you're coming across as, I just want to throw up my words because I feel like I'm about to get hung up on, they're going to hang up on you. So just understanding those things in the process has helped me out a ton. And thank you for that. Yeah, man. Sweet. And yeah, just to give you context, you, you, you sold these deals off of old, you know, seven, the 30 day old lead. So I guess as you progress into start getting some brand new fresh leads, um, what are you most excited about? Like, you know, I think the leads are important. Um, what have you learned about like leads as an agent? Are they important to, do you feel like just for you as you get started, like any questions that, that you might have had as a new agent about leads, like what do you think would be important for an agent to be some be successful when, when it comes to like having good or bad leads? Yeah, I think one thing that I learned kind of before I even joined your agency here was with the importance of having good quality leads, right? And I, I personally can say that I love the, and keyword love, I love the fact that you guys kind of put us through kind of what the Marines go through, right? Hell week per se, yeah. right? Your first two weeks is, is basically hell week. You got to earn your stars and stripes here. Um, and the reason why I'm really grateful for that and being put in a position where I've had to sell B leads is that moving forward, starting next next week, at least for me here, when I get access to those fresh leads, man, I can only imagine what, what production I'm going to have here with you guys. But also it's important to understand that if you have success selling seven to 30 day old leads, right? That aren't fresh with high intent, then that means that you're doing you're doing something right and whatever processes that you're implementing here it's working and that's what i can say here with you guys is that you know what i've learned it hasn't just been oh, okay learn the script and do it i'm actually seeing results so i'm really really excited starting next week to have have those fresh leads and just kill it here with you guys and, and really just get the ball rolling yeah i'm excited dude and uh in regards to actual products that we sell Probably when you're a new agent, you're researching, should I go with this company who only sells, let's say, one product? Let's say they only work with this company. Or should I go with a company that works with a different different products that can put people based off their health conditions? I guess how much easier is it for you to sell 
in a model that we're in like this, knowing that you can put people in the best position? And what would your advice be to someone who's new, not knowing where to go or where to start? Yeah, great question. So I would say, you know, being in a captive agency or where you're just captive to selling one thing, it's not always going to be a perfect fit for everyone. And most of the time it isn't, right? Most of the time it isn't. And as a salesman, as a salesman, sorry, you're put in a position where you have to sell these products to hit your metrics. And if you consciously do not feel good selling these products, you are not going to a feel good about it and b you're not going to sell as much as you can because you know in your heart of hearts I'm not putting this person in the best position possible. So I would say the biggest pro with with being with with an IMO or, or sorry a company that sells multiple different different types of of uh, products here, you have that advantage and you can say to yourself at the end of the day, I actually put, you know, Miss Betty or Mr. Charles in the best position possible because of their health conditions. And I was able to actually get them X, Y, Z for this reason. And, and that's a, that's a great feeling, man, knowing that, you know, it's not just about making the sale. It's knowing that you actually did the, your best and you know, for a fact that you put them in that best position possible. So I think that is key, right? Cause I don't want to have like a, a guilty conscious personally. Right. And I can say that for any new agent out there, uh, just take that into consideration, not discouraging you guys to, to go one way or the other. You're going to choose what you want to do at the end of the day. But I would say that that's definitely the biggest pros when it comes to being somewhere where you sell multiple products. Yeah. Great. Any other takeaways that you think that you could provide value to any new agents or any questions that you had for yourself? that you now have answers to when before getting started? Yeah, um, I would say, man, don't stall. <laughs> don't procrastinate, right? Take it from somebody who, it took almost a year for me to get my license. And I think a big part of that was I had analysis paralysis, mm -hmm. right? Went down the whole, look at this video, look at this video, this guy's saying something, but this guy's saying something, it doesn't match up. What, well, what's the truth? I would say, man, the biggest challenge here for you guys is, is or my recommendation to you guys, sorry, better yet said is just do it get your license, do it. And if you have a good feeling about somewhere you want to go in this case here, you know, apply, apply and just get the ball rolling. Because if you don't do it, take it for somebody who literally waited a year. I could have been a year ahead of the game had I done this ahead of time. So just do it and you'll figure it out as you go. And that's pretty much what I can say. <laughs> Sweet, man. I love that. Um, you know, how can people connect with you? Shout out. What is it? DTD dance studio? DCD. Yeah. Yeah. Love so, it. Yeah, I think so, have questions. If you're, man, if you need to learn about being a new agent, like what what did you do to pass your exam? How can I get started? Like how can they connect with you? Yeah, yeah. So uh, great question. I mean, if if you guys want to hit me up, you can find me on Instagram. This is the school here. I actually wrote it down here. This is the. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Pretty much my Instagram and my school's Instagram. Shout out Elise and Sebastian. Thank you guys. Y'all are amazing. But bro mirrors b r o m i r e z underscore ninety seven. That is my personal account there guys feel free to shoot me a, a, a message i i love to help like i said take it from somebody who's still new to this game and learning as i go um and and really just looking forward to help you guys out too to be successful if i can do it i believe in those people that believe in themselves y'all guys can do it too so really just looking forward to meeting you guys and being part of the team heck yeah sweet brian well thanks for joining us here i hope we bring some value and help some people and hopefully help them you know in this industry so i appreciate you and all your hard work man i'm excited for you just uh about what